Hello, today I am going to take you back on a journey through time to tell you my cycling story. Back to 2012 where it all started, when Fat Darren was on the scene, and uh, take you back through what the last 11 years of my cycling journey has been. So back in 2012, the Tour de France, Bradley Wiggins, and a couple of friends from work suggested we go over and spend the Grand Depart in Belgium in Liège and Sarang and I came back from that inspired and bought myself a Carrera Virtuoso from Halfords. Quite a heavy bike but a bike to get me started and a bike which made me fall in love with cycling. Although it was in that winter of 2013 where I really started to go further and further. In the March I signed up for what was called the Lionheart which was a 62 mile 100k ride from Longley all around the local area and uh, yeah I struggled a little bit doing that distance and it took me six and a half hours to drag my fat old body up King Alfred's Tower and uh, two guys I was doing it Steve and Tom both mates from work um, they managed to finish it a lot quicker and were waiting for me at the finish um, so we didn't really ride together I can remember falling off um, just toppling over my first clipping disaster when I stopped for the for the feed stop and I was in the biggest gear and I just toppled straight over. But these are the things you learn when you're out first off. My second sportive was the Cheddar Sportive again did that in September of 2013 I think and uh, another 60 odd miles really pushing the boundaries of how far I could cycle and uh, did a lot better in that one I think. So I spent a couple of years falling in love with cycling Still wasn't very good at it though, still couldn't get up a hill. My 86 kilogram body just had to drag up a hill and I kept blaming the bike. So I invested in a new bike, a BMC Road Racer SL01. What a bike that was, still have it. And that bike would then take me to 2014 with somehow my friend Stephen Neal, we signed up to cycle across France. 650 miles in six days. We raised a lot of money for Prostate Cancer UK we raised a grand total of £3,240. Just uh, amazing contributions from everybody. But what a ride that was. I mean, five 100 mile rides in a row. And I don't think I'd done many 100 mile rides up to that point. And we did them all back to back from La Touquet La Plage all the way to Foster Mare. And you can follow that journey along. It's still on Twitter at, at CycleFrance2014 if you want to find out how we got on and see some more pictures and read some. Uh, Read some of the posts. My first ascent of Cheddar Gorge took me 45 minutes. Fastest time since, about 10, but <laughs> let's forget the 45. But I was a big boy. So it was at the start of 2015 when my love of hills uh, started and my hatred of hills finished. Until that point, I've done everything I can to avoid hills. I signed up for the 2015 Etapta Tour and that's when I started to lose all my weight. I got down to 69 kilograms. I was flying up the hills. Fat Darren had turned to race Darren. I was all ready for the etapa de tour when the guy I was going with pulled out and ended up not going. So I went and rode my longest ride instead, uh, some 142 mile ride on the day I should have done the etapa, so I knew I was in absolute form. But I did get to France and I did get to the Alps when my mate Steve invited me to Bourg d'Oisson and my first alpine climb was Alpe d'Huez. Yes, yeah, so it was a great little break, Alpe d'Huez. My favourite time of the time was La Croix de Fer, the two hour leisurely climb we cycled up to the top to see those three peaks. It's still my phone screensaver now. I also climbed Ledger's Alps on my own and snapped a chain at Bend 4, uh, stranded in France with a broken chain. And thanks to some Frenchmen, with my little bit of French and a lot of broken English, we managed to fix the chain and I still managed to get to the top. And that led to my love of the Alps. And a few years running, managed to go back to the Alps. In 2016, the Marianne Valley, uh, with my mate Tom, we cycled the Glibier, the Telegraph, yeah, the Col de Glandon, that was hard. Back up to the Quad Affair, just an awesome week.
2017, we went over to the Pyrenees with Tom and Steve. Did quite a few of the big climbs there, the Obisque, the Horta Cam. Oh, an amazing week there. And in 2018, I went back to France on my own, to the Annecy area and did loads of climbs with my favorite climb to date is the Le Grand Colombier. The summit of that is undescribable. It is absolutely immense, I cannot tell you. The feeling I had there. I mean, I've gone on that holiday thinking of starting a vlog and it never happened. So there we go. The summit of the Col de Grand Colombier was absolutely breathtaking. The views over the Rhone, Lac de Bourget and over to Mont Blanc in the distance were unreal. I spent ages taking in the sights, but I had a major scare puncturing on the descent and had to calm my nerves at the local boulangerie. If we rewind the clock back to July 2016, I did the Ride London. I entered it, went on my own, did it on my own, completed the 100 miles in about four and a half hours, but there was an accident in between where somebody crashed into a tree. So we just stood waiting around for quite a while, a couple of hours, I think. But the hotel I stayed in, there was another cycle club staying in that hotel, and I helped them up in the lift with the bikes, and they invited me to dinner, and the camaraderie around that cycle club at that dinner uh, was why I went home and decided I was going to join Mendip Cycling Club. But it was in 2019 when I went with Mendip Cycling Club to Mallorca that my cycling philosophy kind of changed. Until that point, I'd been chasing KOMs. I'd, I'd been and bought myself a Canyon Ultimate frame and I built up my own bike, lightweight parts and everything, made it super, super fast. Um, and then we went to Mallorca and we had a laugh. Having been to the Alps, this was what I would call my first real cycling holiday. Just enjoying riding with some great people. But it was also the start of my off-road navigation laughs as we ended up climbing down some rocks. But the funniest thing was when the others thought they'd met Tour de France legend Tommy Vockler, who had actually met German bike shop owner Thomas Volker. At a point on one of the mountains when I saw somebody zooming up, just staring at their speed and their time on, on their Garmin, that they didn't even look up and see the views. And I kind of decided at that point then that the cycling I want to do is to go and, go and explore and that's the cycling I do today. But 2019 was also the first time I tried to pick up the camera and film. My first proper having a go at trying to film. It was quite hard. I didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, yeah, an experience. I don't know how they do this vlogging crap. <laughs> Twenty nineteen was also the year that I met Pete on a Mendic Club ride. Uh, we got chatting, uh, got on famously well, and our love of YouTube videos. We just kept talking about we should start a YouTube channel. Never really being brave enough to do so, not really knowing what we were doing. But by October twenty nineteen, I started this YouTube channel. Back then, it was called Mendic Cycling Vlogs. The rest is history. The rest is on YouTube, as they say, and you can go back and watch all of that all of my journey from being with the club, leaving the club, my 200 mile ride from Newcastle to uh, Air in Scotland for Chase the Sun, which would actually be 12 months ago tomorrow. So a lot's happened in the bridge since then. So I wanna hear from you. I wanna know when you started watching, what, what video did you start watching? And uh, also let me know a little bit about your cycling story as to why you cycle, the way you cycle, whether it be fast, slow, on the flat, up hills, whatever you do, However you love cycling, let me know in the comments below. And that brings me to what's next. Now what's next for me is when this video goes live, I will have done the first day of my first ever solo bikepacking trip. I'm doing seven days all the way down through the South Downs, all the way through the Surrey Hills, ticking off 44 official climbs. Yeah, 44 official climbs loaded with bike packing gear to last me a week. I will be camping. <laughs> I don't know why. It sounded like fun when I thought about it and uh, the trip I just had with Pete was immense. So I got kind of excited for it. So I'm both excited and scared. So look out on Strava, you can follow along. I might be putting some things up on Instagram as we go. But yeah, that's me for the foreseeable week. Anyway, that's my story. How I got into cycling, uh, the only thing to tell you now 
is about my bikes. Right, so obviously we've got the tandem, we've got the canyon, we've got the very famous trek, and then my wife's bike, my daughter's bike, the Carrera, which was my uh, very first purchase, my very first road bike, and then we got uh, my daughter's bike and my very old cycle work bike. And then hung up here on display is the bike that took me across France in 2012. I mean, it needs a little bit of a repair there, and I think. Ed Collins at Grand Tour Cycling is going to fix that for me. So that's my bikes and my cycling story. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you bike packing around the South Downs. Should be fun. I heard you say you found the story.